night. Uh, so we'll see where that goes in the next little while. So a few other things to talk about, and this is where I think the disagreement obviously begins, which is company tax cuts. Now, uh, Tony Shepard, the former boss of the Business Council, the man who had uh, plenty of ideas about where government can pull its head in in terms of spending, he thinks that there needs to be an almost formal promise from companies here saying if we're going to pay less tax, we'll start paying uh, workers a little bit more. Here's what he had to say today, and I, I love uh, Shep a lot. Uh, if companies get a significant tax cut, I think it is beholden on all big companies that they broadly look at how they can divvy up the dividends to shareholders to investment which creates jobs and to workers. We are not talking about small or medium businesses here, we are talking about the big guys. Uh, as to where these tax cuts go in the next little while, uh, One Nation looks like they're going to vote against them. So most likely uh, we keep going on the merry-go-round potentially all the way to the next election here. Um, Senator McAllister, I just want to ask you, um, I understand the logic that is often said about, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, if the big end, I understand the politics, I should say. If the big end of town gets money, then, you know, there's, there's more people that work for companies than own companies, so let's keep talking about uh, focusing on the worker, not the, uh, not the company. But if the company was able to promise to say, well, if we're going to pay less tax, we will pay our people more money, does that move the needle at all for you? Well, it's a pretty roundabout way of approaching, isn't it? <coughs> if you want to help middle income and low income people get a pay rise, you might start by having a look at the way workplaces are organised, you might start by uh, reversing the decision around penalty rates, you might uh, remove some of the impediments that actually make it very difficult for workers to join their union and get themselves an enterprise bargain. But the government's not interested in any of those things. And that's part of the problem for them, I think, because they just haven't shown any good faith at all in relation to low and middle income people. And low and middle income people don't trust them when they talk about the benefits of a corporate tax cut. I'd imagine you'd disagree, Senator Hume. I can't tell you just how much I disagree. <laughs> well, feel free to do it on television. It's part of the fun. I it's why people eat at this restaurant. <laughs> you are going to hear about corporate tax cuts from the coalition government from now right up until the election, until we get this legislation passed, because this is so profoundly important. And I think what we've seen in the US is that a lot of those companies like you know, Walmarts and Disney's and Apple's and Wells Fargo have um, you know, come out and, uh, you know, as part of the sort of social contract of the tax cuts that they've received, given their, pay, their, uh, their workers' pay rises or bonuses or, or donated to philanthropic causes, they've demonstrated you know, the, the social benefits of those corporate tax cuts. Now, the corporate tax cuts that we're instituting in Australia, the, the second tranche in particular, obviously aren't quite as radical as the ones in the US and they, are, you know, they, they come in over time so that they won't have that sort of massive impact immediately. Uh, but that said, what they are doing, and we're already seeing it happening is that they are creating jobs. That first tranche of, of corporate tax cuts are already creating jobs, 400,000 of them in the, just the last 12 months alone, 300,000 of those full time. You know, they are in fact making a difference, participation rates up. It's, uh, you know, it's actually really exciting and I can't understand how the opposition can't see the economics in this. I mean, it is, it's logical economics and, you know, to deny it I think is, is, is just, is extraordinary. But what about the logical observation too, that um, the government your government spends more money than it gets. We are in a budget deficit of $20 billion. If you are going to remove revenue from the system, how the hell do you replace it unless you're going to turn around and make the equal cuts? That to me is actually the most powerful argument against the cuts, <coughs> saying we're in a budget deficit till we're back to surplus, we can't do anything about it, nothing to do with you know fairness to workers, all the rest of it. That to me is the argument. And look, I asked the Treasurer point blank that question, I asked the Finance Minister that question. And he says, well, uh, more money in the economy means potentially we'll get some more tax through the back door. But the problem is, the spending is not a maybe. Uh, the, the, the tax coming back is the maybe, and you're currently spending 20 billion more than you get. Well, the good news is that spending growth has actually is, is lower in this particular in this government than it has been in 50 years. It's only at 1.9 percent, which is you know a, a tremendous effort. And we're still looking at a budget surplus in 2021. We're on track for that. The last five um, uh, you know um, forecasts have come out and said we are still on track for a budget surplus in 2021. Spending is reined in. It is under control, as you well know. 
you know, there's a lot of baked in spending that came in yeah. from the previous government, lots of baked in And the one before, family and tax benefit And turning government A&B. spending around is like turning the Queen Mary, but we are actually doing it, and which is you know, very encouraging. And the, the Treasurer is absolutely right, you know, growing the pie is the objective here. The Coalition will always be the party of lower taxes, whether it be corporate tax or whether it be personal income tax. Senator Lionhelm, the logic that comes from the, the, the Treasurer and Finance Ministry as well, that's why these tax cuts all don't start on day one, it's why they take a few years to kick in because basically it marries up to when the budget does start to balance. But the simple logic to me about any tax cut is if you're going to rob the government of revenue, then you must deny the government spending. They're not going to do that. No, they're not. And uh, yes, you're right to criticise them. But still there's this theory that it's called starve the beast. If you, uh, <laughs> if you reduce the supply of money, they've got less to spend. Therefore, they have to. Um, no matter what, they have to find ways to spend it. And um, I suppose I should, I mean, I'm very critical of uh, the government and its uh, lack of fortitude when it comes to reducing spending. There's tremendous areas where spending could be reduced. But I, I suppose I should acknowledge that probably the Senate would, uh, would uh, reject a lot of their ideas. But just, just think of middle class welfare. Uh, duplication between the states and the Commonwealth. We're not talking about taking money out of the pockets of the poor and, and uh, welfare and all that sort of stuff. There's a heap of areas where um, spending can be reduced. And so if it takes starving the beast to, uh, to get you know, both sides to realise that uh, that it, the budget can be balanced, then whatever, you know, I don't mind. My problem is, is that they well, reach Paul... for the cookie jar paid for by foreign debt. But sorry, <laughs> Senator McAllister. Oh, I was going to jump in because I do think that uh, David's spelled the cat, you know. Um, people can see what starving the beast means. It means that, you know, public hospitals just grown with the strain. You don't get the money into public schooling and higher education that you need if you want to transform the economy. There are real costs that come with delivering a $65 billion tax cut and the costs are very certain. Their cuts to government services or increases in personal income tax. But the benefits are very uncertain. And for all of Jane's confidence about, uh, you know, growing the economy as a result of tax cuts, I think the benefits are, that are modelled are actually very limited. And, you know, w w Labor concedes that there may be a benefit, but it's about priority.